Hi, I'm Dr. Frank A. Thomas, and it is my very proud privilege to present to you the African-American preaching tradition in digital series. I want to talk about the study of African-American preaching before Martin Luther King Jr., whom uh, Mervyn Warren calls BK. Mervyn Warren says African-American preaching can be divided into BK before King and AK after King. I want to talk about BK, African-American preaching before King. While there were many chronicle sermons and much commentary about black preaching and slave narratives in American religious and social history, the academic study of the homiletic methods of the African-American preaching tradition until the early 1970s was minimal and small. There are at least four principal reasons for this significant omission of scholarship. The first being that much of the genius of African-American tradition traveled in the oral tradition and much scholarship tends to be written. And so African-American sermons, many of them were not written down, just like spirituals, many were not written down, folk stories, these things traveled in the oral tradition and were not written down. One of the saddest points is that we lost some of these stories because they were not written down. Secondly, African-American homiletics was for the most part passed on in the apprentice model of the black church. Many African and not most African-American preachers did not go to school to learn how to preach. They didn't go to seminary or to go to college. They were apprenticed. They watched their pastor preach. They learned from their pastor. Their pastor took them to conventions and denominational meetings where they heard fabulous preachers. Their pastors invited preachers in. I remember being as a young uh, uh, preacher, they would ask you to drive the uh, guest preacher uh, pick the guest preacher up from the airport and drive the preacher for meals and back to the hotel. And that was some of the most important teaching time for me because from, from a fabulous preacher, I could ask questions and learn. This is called the apprenticeship model of teaching. Much of African-American preachers was learned not in a seminary, not in a written text, but in this oral tradition and this oral model. Thirdly, based upon Western intellectual bias, Few scholars paid serious attention to the complexity of African-American preaching. In other words, because of race, there was some Western intellectual bias that this uh, African-American preaching was not significant. Um, it was not written down or uh, the musicality of the tradition was very subjective and all kinds of reasons. But much of it is a Western intellectual bias where few scholars paid serious attention to the complexity of African-American preaching. And finally, until the 1970s, African-American preaching was primarily studied by non-theological and few theological and homiletical scholars until the preaching of Martin Luther King Jr. In fact, Mervyn Warren says the increased visibility and respectability of King's preaching led to an increased respectability and visibility and hence study of African-American preaching. In my next video, I will turn to AK, African-American preaching after the death of Martin Luther King. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. And please don't forget that each and every Monday we do a Periscope live broadcast, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Twice a week we release videos in this series on African-American preaching. And finally, each and every week we upload spiritual vitamins to SoundCloud. We want to make sure that you will subscribe to each of these platforms. And I know you want to get as fast as you can this powerful information that's coming forth. So sign up. God bless you. And thank you so much for watching.